Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. Today's show contains news that many have been hoping for and anticipating. It's also a story that not a lot of the mainstream media is covering for obvious reasons. When Elon Musk was considering buying Twitter, he talked about his plan to make it what it is intended to be, a free speech platform, the bedrock of a civil democratic society. He has hinted at things like restoring banned accounts and finding out how many accounts were bots and which accounts got promoted and which ones got demoted or shadow banned. Since Musk has finalized the purchase, we have seen some immediate massive changes. Musk polled users about reinstating former President Donald Trump's account from its indefinite ban as well as restoring other conservatives who got put in Twitter jail. The people spoke, and the majority voted for Trump's reinstatement. So it happened. And Musk quoted Vox Populi, Vox Dei, which means voice of the people, voice of God. Questioning the COVID CDC NIH WHO uniform narrative is no longer misinformation now especially in the aftermath of that narrative being proven wrong. People are finally beginning to speak freely about the dubious science that surrounded that uniform Ministry of Truth narrative. Musk tweeted out, You know Twitter is being fair when extremists on far right and far left are simultaneously upset. Twitter aims to serve center 80% of people who wish to learn, laugh, and engage in reasoned debate. What you have to respect about Musk at the helm is his ability to listen to and be receptive to his users. He polls them. He asks them to show him where things are wonky. He cracks down on the spam and bot accounts and is trying to purge them. That is a responsive leader. But one area Musk has really been wanting to look into was the suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story in October of 2020. And the reason this is so significant and important is that we know that many of those who voted for Joe Biden did so without knowledge of the Hunter story. So shortly before 4 p.m. on December 2nd, Musk warned us that he was about to unleash something, tweeting the emoji of popcorn. So then we learned that he will be releasing internal communication at Twitter regarding the Hunter Biden story that the New York Post released that was then suppressed. So then Musk tweets the following. Here we go. And links to independent journalist Matt Taibbi, who starts his series of tweets naming them the Twitter files. And in a methodical list, Taibbi begins by stating, the Twitter files tell an incredible story from inside one of the world's largest and most influential social media platforms. It is a Frankensteinian tale of a human-built mechanism grown out the control of its designer. He goes on, Twitter, in its conception, was a brilliant tool for enabling instant mass communication, making a true real-time global conversation possible for the first time. In an early conception, Twitter more than lived up to its mission statement giving people the power to create and share ideas and information instantly without barriers. As time progressed, however, the company was slowly forced to add those barriers. Some of the first tools for controlling speech were designed to combat the likes of spam and financial fraudsters. Slowly, over time, Twitter staff and executives began to find more and more uses for these tools. Outsiders began petitioning the company to manipulate speech as well. First a little, then more often, then constantly. By 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back, handled. Taibbi posts the first internal document which shows that the Biden team reached out to Twitter regarding several tweets that needed to be handled. And they were. This was happening at the executive level at Twitter, not some lower level employees. 
Taibbi goes on. He tweets the following. Celebrities and unknowns alike could be removed or reviewed at the behest of a political party. And then he shows an internal document where Twitter execs are meddling in certain users' accounts, like conservative actor James Woods, at the behest of the Democratic National Committee. Tybee continues, both parties had access to these tools. For instance, in 2020, requests from both the Trump White House and the Biden campaign were received and honored. However, this system wasn't balanced. It was based on contacts. Because Twitter was and is overwhelmingly staffed by people of one political orientation, there were more channels, more ways to complain open to the left, well, Democrats, than the right. Taibbi includes a table from OpenSecrets.gov that shows that from the 2018 to 2022 cycles, the contributions to Democrats went from about 96% to almost 100%. I mean, 96 was already extremely high, but it got even more partisan than that over the two cycles. So Taibbi says, the resulting slant in content moderation decisions is visible in the documents you're about to read. However, it's also the assessment of multiple current and former high-level executives. It's clear that Taibbi has done a great deal of research into this after getting his hands on these documents. Unlike Twitter, he cared about being accurate. And so he was ready to really dive in, calling this the Twitter files part one, how and why Twitter blocked the Hunter Biden laptop story. On October 14th, 2020, the New York Post published Biden secret emails, an expose based on the contents of Hunter Biden's abandoned laptop. Twitter took extraordinary steps to suppress the story, removing links and posting warnings that it may be unsafe. They even blocked its transmission via direct message, a tool hitherto reserved for extreme cases, e.g. child pornography. Okay, so Twitter went to extraordinary extreme lengths to suppress this story, putting it in the same category as child porn, which is actually quite interesting with the recent Balenciaga revelation. Twitter had been more than happy to permit Balenciaga to peddle its deviance. Taibbi continues, saying that White House spokeswoman Kayleigh McEnany was locked out of her account for tweeting about the story, prompting a furious letter from Trump campaign staffer Mike Hahn, who seethed, at least pretend to care, for the next 20 days. So think about this. Trump's press secretary merely talked about the New York Post story and got locked out for citing the article that the Biden team didn't even dispute. Sardonically, Han tells this sector that they should pretend to care and that he was unaware that Twitter was getting into the business of censoring news articles. Taibbi tweets, this led public policy executive Caroline Strom to send out a polite WTF query. Several employees noted that there was tension between the comms and policy teams who had little or less control over moderation and the safety slash trust teams. Strom's note returned the answer that the laptop story had been removed for violation of the company's hacked materials policy. Now, why would the story be removed due to apparent hacking? What was their basis for determining that? So, Taibbi continues. Although several sources recalled hearing about a general warning from federal law enforcement that summer about possible foreign hacks, there's no evidence that I've seen of any government involvement in the laptop story. In fact, that might have been the problem. The decision was made at the highest levels of the company, but without the knowledge of CEO Jack Dorsey with former head of legal policy and trust, Vijaya Gaddy, playing a key role. Now recall that Vijaya Gaddy is the one who cried in a conference call when she learned that Elon Musk was taking over. She was also promptly fired when Musk took over. Now you know why she was crying. 
So the internal idea was to freelance it, which is how one former employee characterized the decision. 